I'm really happy to, to be introducing Ed uh, here. Um, I, I first uh, met, well, had contact with, with Ed uh, about uh, 13 years ago um, when, uh, when he contacted me and we started uh, collaborating on um, uh, certain kinds of parameter instability tests um, and uh, psychometric models. And um, this, this collaboration uh, turned out to be, well, something that uh, there was at least not atypical for what Ed does. So what, what I, I find uh, great about working with Ed and also reading his work is that, that he clearly um, can combine many different uh, perspectives. So he, he has, uh, of course, the, the psychology side, applied psychology side, psychometrics in there, statistical modeling, also some statistical learning, flexible regression techniques, um, software, and he's made uh, contributions um, uh, uh, to, to all of these things. And um, can can tie them together and also work work together with different people. So that that's why why I think it's always uh, a joy reading his work or um, as we are today listening to uh, to his presentation. And um, today we will he hear something about the Blavan uh, project um, that developed by taking the um, model specification and model summary reporting side of um, um, the uh, popular BAM package by, by Yves Rossel and uh, adding um, Bayesian inference engine to, to it, first written in JAX um, and then also in STAN. And yeah, uh, we, we will hear, hear more about the details of all of this from, from Ed himself. So I'm very pleased and, uh, and curious. Take it away, Ed. All right. Um... Thank you for the introduction and let me get my slides up here. Okay, so we will talk about uh, the Blavan package and I'll start out with uh, various acknowledgements here. So uh, the, the things I'll discuss today, I've, I've benefited from um, collaborating with a number of, of people. Um, and at the very bottom, I want to mention PsychoCo explicitly because I think this package wouldn't have happened without PsychoCo. Um, like Akam said, I contacted him maybe in 2008 or 2009 because I, I was doing lots of R stuff, but I felt kind of lost about what, like, where could I really make a contribution? And um, over the years, I've learned a lot from Akim and uh, Eve and Carolyn and others here. Um, so with that, like Akim said, uh, Blavan is a package that is, is uh, built on top of Wavan. Um, I see a complaint about the slides, maybe I try to keep the chat open, but then it overlaps with my slides. Hopefully that fixed the problem, but let me know if not. Um, Blavan is, is built on top of Lavan, and it's sort of like a bridge between Lavan and some of the, the Bayesian MCMC software, uh, JAX and Stan. Um, we started this, um, Eve and I, I think it was like 2015 with a simpler goal, which was just um, to take a, a fitted Lavan model and write some code that could look at that model and then generate JAGS code to estimate that model. Um, so we had some success there and then um, it just kind of kept going. I, I, I would find a new problem or something that, that it wasn't straightforward to, to fix. And, uh, you know, I kept trying to improve it. And so uh, lots of problems just involve speed or efficiency of model estimation and some others that I'll discuss today. So here's a, an outline of the talk. I'll first just give an, an introduction or, or overview of the package. Uh, then uh, next will be some more specific details about exactly 
how does Blavon work and, and, and what goes on in the code. After that, there will be some examples. Maybe we could call them advanced. I don't know if they're advanced, but there's some extra examples about things you could do. And then finally, some conclusions. Okay, so in introducing the package, I thought I would start out just with some general statements about structural equation models and Bayesian structural equation models. So we start with our slide here, why structural equation models? I think sometimes these models get a bad reputation because you see some uh, really large, crazy path diagrams with uh, kind of uh, wild conclusions being drawn from those path diagrams. And uh, yeah, I would acknowledge that those things exist, but um, one of the things that really interests me about this family of models is how they overlap with lots of other families of models, including mixed models, time series, uh, item response, uh, the, the DAGs and so on with, with causal research. Um, this is interesting to me because it means if you have some good procedures for estimating structural equation models, that typically extends to lots of other types of models. Um, so even you know, if you're thinking in terms of publications or something, well, oftentimes the good methods for structural equation models can be applied in lots of other places and vice versa. So then we could go on to say why Bayesian structural equation models. And well, here are some features of the Bayesian models that, that could be appealing in different situations. The first, of course, is about um, prior information or expectations. Um, uh, lots of times people might say there that, well, I don't know what my parameters will look like before I fit the model. And I think here, lots of times it's more about uh, you know what the parameters will not look like before you fit the model. Like there's, there's usually some very implausible ranges of parameter values that could at least be ruled out with prior distributions. Um, second is about uncertainty. So especially with structural equation models, we have lots of types of uncertainty, say stemming from the values of latent variables or, or predictions that include uncertainty and latent variables as well as residuals or not. Or oftentimes we're worried about functions of parameters. So uncertainty in all of these things is, is typically easier to describe with Bayesian methods. And finally, the third point here is about flexibility. Um, for certain complex models, um, Bayesian methods can make things easier. And especially thinking about uh, Blavan, um, there's always like a, a JAGS or a stand file that is written and that if you want to, you could take it and modify as you wish. Okay, so now we'll get a little bit more into Blavan itself. Like I said before, it's, it's built on top of Lavan, and that was an important thing from the start um, where there's already a nice model specification syntax and um, some commands and procedures surrounding Lavan. And um, I think it, it was interesting to me to have uh, some Bayesian stuff that works just like that. So that if you know Lavan, you already know some things in Blavan as well. And so we'll just see a, a very initial example here. Here's a simple uh, confirmatory factor analysis model with six observed variables and two latent variables. And well, if we, we fit this model in Lavan, we it could look something like this, where we've named our latent variables visual and verbal. We have our six observed variables on the right side there. And um, we have our CFA command to fit that in Lavan. Now, if we're moving to Blavan, well, we can see not much changes here if you rely on defaults for everything. 
So our model specification stays the same. Um, we have BCFA instead of just CFA. So the command is slightly different, but everything else is the same. That's um, what I'm talking about, where um, if you know Lavan, you know something about Blavan. But of course, it's not always a, a good idea to rely on defaults for everything. And, and so there's extra arguments we could use that are specific to Bayesian methods. Um, so there's like a default a number of burn-in and sampling iterations for the model estimation. We can change those if we want. Uh, there's functionality to specify your own prior distributions either for specific individual model parameters or for classes of model parameters. So for example, we could uh, set a specific prior distribution for all of the factor loadings in the model. There's functionality for sampling latent variables. So that um, is, is one of the things I mentioned earlier where we could look at posterior distributions of latent variables for individual uh, rows of the data set, typically people. And there's also some plotting functionality, also some metrics for assessing convergence of, of the Markov chains and so on. Um, so one summary of Lavan uh, versus Blavan. Well, here's, here's a, an extra slide I forgot. Here's another example of that same model without all of the defaults. Um, so here we like have a, a, a specific prior distribution for one individual factor loading here. Um, at the same time, we have a different prior distribution for the remaining factor loadings as specified in the, the call to the model estimation. Um, and then we have various extra arguments for the number of burn-in and, and sampling iterations, the number of chains. Uh, we can um, also sample the latent variables with our, our argument here, save LVs. And the, the final argument is about uh, parallelizing across chains so that like every chain, each of the four chains is estimated using a different core on your computer. So that's our extra example without defaults. But what I was talking about a minute ago is here is the summary, which uh, comes from Richard McElrath of comparing Lavan to Blavan. Um, so maybe Blavan is like Lavan with extra feathers. Okay, so now we'll, we'll, we'll go into some extra detail about how the package works and, and what happens behind the scenes. So I'll start with how Blavan worked when, um, when uh, it was first released around 2016. Um, originally, um, we took a model specification from Lavan. That was, uh, Lavan will convert that to a parameter table that contains all of the information about the model parameters and which ones are free, which ones are fixed, and so on. So once we had that parameter table, that's when the Blavan uh, code would start working where it would take that parameter table and then uh, output a, a JAGS model or later a STAN model that's specific to what the user requested. Um, at the same time, um, if you've used JAGS or STAN, you know that it requires the data in a specific format. So we would take the data that was provided to Lavan and convert that to the JAGS or STAN format. That's uh, usually like a list of, of lots of different pieces of data. After that, we could estimate the model using JAGS or STAN. We, we have the code for the model along with the data and also some initial values we would have to create. And then once the model is estimated, we can pull the results back and summarize them in various ways and arrange them so that 
the results looked like the Lavan output. Um, we could put posterior means in, in place of maximum likelihood estimates, for example, and posterior standard deviations in place of standard errors, and then some other model summaries that are specific to Bayesian methods. Um, so that's uh, how everything worked originally. And one of the details here is that originally we would always treat the latent variables as extra model parameters to be sampled. And that's how things usually work, I think, with, with Bayesian estimation of structural equation models. It's advantageous because if you condition on these latent variables, you often, for many models, get conditional independence between the observed variables. And that means for the observed variables, you can use univariate likelihoods instead of multivariate likelihoods, which can speed up um, computations or, or make certain things simpler. But one disadvantage here, like it says in the, the second bullet, is that um, usually there's lots of latent variables. Like every person has their, their own values of these variables. And typically you have lots of people, maybe hundreds of people in your data set. And for some models, you have many latent variables. So if we think of these as model parameters, we're adding many hundreds or thousands of extra parameters to sample, which can lead to inefficiency in uh, the model estimation. Um, Specifically, this can, can lead to models uh, that are, are very slow. So for the, the original uh, model estimations in Blavan, there were situations where it could take um, hours to get results that, that you could use. And for me, that was very frustrating because if I'm trying to develop the package and I have to wait an hour to see whether something worked, um, I'm, I'm not patient enough to, to wait that long. And so around this time, I was uh, like looking for solutions or thinking about how could I improve the model estimation more um, just to make it more feasible to, to continue to, to develop the package. And around that time, I stumbled on this GitHub repository um, this is from Ben Goodrich, who's one of the, the main stand developers. And you can see from this slide, uh, this is a repository that was for a presentation to the University of Kansas. Um, some of you might know Paul Johnson uh, or, or others there. So Ben created this repository that was um, like his, approach to doing structural equation modeling in STAN. And it's immense, like immensely helpful if you have like an expert in STAN or some other software and you can just see how they do things. Uh, this repository gave me lots of ideas and, and Ben contributed some of his code here. Um, it, it, it helped a lot for Blavon's development. And one of the things that, that Ben did in his code was avoid sampling all of those latent variables. He moved back to using the marginal likelihood for these models, uh, which is the same likelihood that frequentists would use here. Um, so you might say, well, one of the, the keys of Bayesian methods is, is that you can sample those latent variables and learn about them. And maybe the marginal likelihood, now you, you can't do that. But the, the second bullet here is important. We can still sample the latent variables. It's just not during model estimation. Uh, we Once we have all of the posterior samples of other parameters, we can then sample the latent variables after model estimation or in, in Stan's generated quantities block if, if you know uh, Stan. 
So this was interesting because, well, in a way we're doing something similar to what the frequentists do, but also there's other tricks uh, that, that are specific to Bayesian modeling that we can still use here. Um, so this really sped up estimation in Stan. Um, and, and Ben's approach also led to another innovation here, which is that instead of writing a separate stand file for each model, um, we have this one massive stand file that can handle most models that a user would request. Um, so, so in stand, you have to like compile your model before you can uh, use it for estimation. And that means now in Blavan, this one big stand file gets compiled uh, at package installation, and then it can fit lots of models that the user requests. Uh, so that can speed things up a little bit because you don't have to wait for that compile every time uh, you ask for a new model. Now there's a bit of a disadvantage here that like a third bullet says, this uh, reduces flexibility a little bit because um, for instance, prior distributions are, are hard coded in that file. So you could like for factor loading say, you have to use a normal distribution for the priors there. You can define the mean and the standard deviation of those prior distributions, but it has to be normal. And if you want something other than normal, well, you can um, ask to export this stand file and then modify things on your own and, and estimate that new model directly in stand. Also, the older Blavan approaches, which are a little more flexible, like in prior distributions, are still available. There's a, a target argument um, that you can use for those older approaches. Um, so we implemented this new approach. Um, we did lots of uh, like comparisons to make sure this new approach is, is working better than the old approach. And, and this slide is one example. So in this plot, the y-axis is a measure of sampling efficiency. It's effective sample size per second. That's what the abbreviation is. And we can compute a value for every model parameter. So in the model we're looking at here, there's, there's 30 parameters. Those are on the x-axis. And then we're comparing our three approaches, the, the yellow that's labeled new stand. This is this approach that, that marginal, marginalizes over the latent variables. We have our, our older, Blavan approaches called old stand and JAGS. And the fact that this yellow line is, is much higher than the others implies that the new method is, is better. It's, it's more efficient than the older methods. So we did a number of comparisons like these. Uh, we have a recent JSS paper that describes this in more detail if you're interested. But we find that almost always this new approach is, is faster and more efficient than the older ones. Okay, so now we'll move on to a, a couple more advanced examples. And um, please let me know about time if, if I'm going over. I, I am not keeping a good eye on that. Um, so the examples I'll, I'll show, one of the interesting things to me uh, always during uh, Blavan development is what is what can be easy to do in R, uh, like if we combine Blavan with other packages that would be difficult or impossible to do outside of R. And I'll show some of those things today. Um, some of them involve uh, computation of information criteria like WAIC for model comparison. And there's some other posterior predictive assessments, uh, more general ones that I'll show here. Um, some of you know the Lou package um, and that's 
in some ways like a, a easy thing or an easy thing you could think of to do with with Blavan, which is estimate models using Blavan and then use the, the Lou package for computing WAIC or the, the leave one out uh, criterion that is also computed there. Now, one detail is um, these information criteria involve model likelihoods. And for these models with latent variables, there's more than one likelihood you could use for the same model. And so uh, I actually have a, a paper that describes this. And it, it turns out that in most cases, we should use a marginal likelihood that's marginal over the latent variables. That's the best likelihood to use for these information criteria. So in Blavan, we can obtain these, these marginal likelihood values automatically and then send them to the Lou package for, um, for these information criteria. So here's one silly example of that. Uh, this is the, a factor analysis model that um, is, is probably been overused in, in Lavan and Blavan. But um, I have two variations of this model where there's this um, X4 on the first line. This is an observe variable that typically does not go with the, the first visual latent variable. And on the second model, I've added X7 for this, this textual latent variable that usually doesn't go there. But I've created two non-nested models that I might uh, compare with information criteria. So I fit the two models on this slide. Um, now Blavan provides this uh, comparison function, Blav compare, that basically sends the needed information to the Lou package and, and pulls back the results. So this output gives us WAIC and the leave one out uh, criterion values for our two models, as well as the difference between the two with a standard error there. So that standard error I think is interesting because we can say how different are the models con considering uh, their uncertainty. And in this case, we might conclude that uh, the differences between the two models, say in WAIC, are very small uh, considering the standard errors here. So we might not prefer either one. Now we can continue uh, the strategy of information criteria and extend them to ordinal models. Now the ordinal models in Blavan are very new. Um, like they've, they've been on CRAN for like two weeks now or so. Um, and the, that big stand file that, that I talked about earlier has been extended to also handle ordinal variables here. There's a data augmentation uh, that we're using there that I could talk more about if someone's interested. Um, but if we're thinking about information criteria for these models, um, these are more complicated. We still want this marginal likelihood that I talked about. But now we have to evaluate this cumulative distribution function of a multivariate normal, which is uh, very difficult. But this is another place where other R packages can be helpful. So there's this TMVN SIM package uh, that we can use to help evaluate this or approximate this marginal likelihood after a model estimation. And so here's an example. This is like the same three factor model that we just looked at, but it's uh, using ordinal data instead of continuous. So we see there's an ordered equals true argument we're using now. Um, and there's some extra things. Uh, the ordinal models are a, a bit slower than the continuous ones. So we worry more about parallelization. This last argument is, is 
getting at that approximation of the marginal likelihoods here and that value 50 is is saying how many um, important samples are we using to approximate this likelihood but once we fit that model now uh, we can use our fit measures command like usual and this gives us our, our various uh, information criteria and so on for this model so that's a, another one that is, is kind of hard to compute and I think would be much harder if, if we didn't have other um, R tools to build on. Um, the last example here, okay, Florian, I see your, your three minutes there. Uh, the last example is, is about more general posterior predictive assessments. Um, we have a function uh, PPMC. This was contributed by Terence Jorgensen a, a year or two ago. And this lets you define like any function that summarizes your model and do some posterior predictive assessments there. So this example, um, there's a recent paper that talks about posterior predictive assessments of item total correlations. This is more of like an item response thing, but we can also use it for these ordinal structural equation models. Um, the idea is that we will have observed item total correlations. These are like for each item, you look at the responses on that item uh, and correlated with a sum of all the other items. So we can compute observed values and then also look at the posterior distribution of those values under our estimated model. So in terms of the code, all we have to do is define this function uh, that is um, what's going into the function is a Lavan object and then we're our function is computing these item total correlations. Once we define that function, we just use our PPMC command where we send our fitted model in and then supply the function we just defined. And then we get some output about the posterior distribution of these item total correlations, along with where do, do our observed item total correlations fall within this posterior distribution. Uh, there's nine rows here because we have like nine items so each one will have its own item total correlation okay so i know i'm about out of time but um in general i would say blavan so far has led to some improvements and sort of tightening in in various issues with with bayesian structural equation model estimation and comparison um, I have a, a pretty new grant from the Institute of Education Sciences that is, is supporting current work. So the ordinal models um, along with, with future work here. So in the near future, I'll um, uh, continue to refine the ordinal models and uh, some of the multi-level structural equation models will be up next. There's some other ideas there about uh, um, things that uh, uh, we could consider in more detail in the future involving parallelization uh, and more general modeling frameworks. And I'm always open to contributions as well. Um, here are some papers. These are um, some of my papers that I mentioned along the way. Um, others, uh, the, the various R packages I used in, in papers that I mentioned. Uh, and that's all. Uh, you can install the package the usual way. And I have a GitHub site with some more details. And that's all. Thank you.